This is an M4 Sherman tank. And this is a very shy Sherman who is trying to masquerade as a laundry basket in order to confuse the enemy. Of course, I'm joking. This is the Sherman DD, or Duplex Drive, or Donald Duck, as it was called by its crews, because it floated in the water, like a duck. And it was one of the first examples of an amphibious landing tank, and also served during the D-Day landings, providing armored support for the many heroes who stormed the beaches of Normandy. Welcome to Tanks Simplified, where the information is simple and the drawings are even more. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at one of the more interesting tanks, the Sherman DD. So without further ado, let's begin. As you've probably already noticed, the Sherman DD had a large deployable canvas screen surrounding the entire tank. The screen contained inflatable tubes, which were pumped full of pressurized air to keep the tank afloat, and the screen was held in place by metal brackets, which could be lifted or dropped by the crew of five operating the tank. This was designed by Hungarian-born engineer Nicholas Strausler, and he experimented with it on the Tetrarch and Valentine tanks before utilizing it on the Sherman. With the canvas screen up, the DD looked quite mundane, and if you didn't have any better idea, you might just think it's a weird boat, until the screen was dropped very quickly, surprising the enemy with a tank jump scare. The DD part of the name referred to the duplex drive system which propelled the tank in water. The back had 18-inch propellers to help it swim through the water that were connected to the movement of the tracks themselves, and could be steered either by the driver or by the commander using a stick outside of the tank. Once the tank landed, the propellers could be lifted up and stowed away. The Sherman DD was not very fast using these propellers, reaching a top speed of around 4 knots in the water. For obvious reasons, the tank's electrical systems were waterproofed, and DD tanks also had a periscope for the driver as well as filtering in a chimney on top of the tank to divert engine fumes away from the crew. The tanks were also equipped with underwater breathing apparatuses in case the tank ever sank. Now that the technical part is over, let's get into the reason why the army chose to use laundry baskets to storm the beaches of Normandy. The Sherman DD was part of a family of tanks known as Hobart's Funnies, named in honor of the commanding officer of the 79th Armored Division, Percy Hobart, who wanted to create unique tanks for unique circumstances. The purpose of the Sherman DD in particular was to storm beaches and provide infantry the armored support they needed. An advantage of DD tanks was that they could be unloaded off of a landing craft tank offshore, keeping the ship safe from enemy fire. However, DD tanks were unreliable at longer distances and were particularly vulnerable to rough waves and poor weather, which could overcome the tank and sink it. Another amphibious tank option was deep wading tanks, which could be unloaded by a landing craft tank close to the shore and then drive from the shallow water onto the beach. While more reliable, wading tanks exposed LCTs to more enemy fire, and if an LCT went down, all of the tanks it was carrying would likely go down with it. This is what happened at the failed Dieppe raid in 1942 an earlier attempt at an amphibious invasion of France, and why the British were so adamant on finding a new way to land tanks on the shore. So it's kind of a pick-your-poison situation. By late 1943, both British and American armed forces agreed to use DD Shermans for the D-Day landings, and production would take place in both countries under top secrecy. The tank crews who had participated on D-Day got their first experience using these newfangled pieces of technology using DD Valentines. There, they would learn how to drive the tanks, set up the canvas covers, and most importantly, safely escape the tank should the worst occur. Unfortunately, during the training exercise Operation Smash, several Valentine tanks sunk and six crew members tragically lost their lives. Crews switched over to Shermans by early 1944, but unfortunately tragedy struck again when three Shermans sank and three crew members died. During D-Day, American, Canadian, and British Sherman DD tanks were used to capture the five beaches, Sword, Gold, Utah, Omaha, and Juneau. The Sherman DDs were met with mixed success. At the British assaults on Gold and Sword beaches, the DDs mostly made it there in one piece, however, were delayed. At the British assault on Sword Beach, the 13th 18th Royal Hussars lost three of their DD Shermans to the waves. And on Gold Beach, the Sherwood Rangers lost another eight to the waves, while the 4th 7th Dragoon Guards skipped the whole swimming up to the shore thing and were landed by an LCT. On Juneau Beach, the Canadian 1st Hussars, a eh, sorry, had eight tanks out of the 29 launched, not make it to shore. And the Fort Garry Horse Regiment, came ashore aboard an LCT. At Utah Beach, the 70th Tank Battalion had all but one of their 28 DDs reach the shore in one piece, with the rest hitching a ride aboard an LCT. Things took a turn, however, at Omaha Beach, where the 741st Tank Battalion lost 27 out of the 29 Sherman DDs that they launched to flooding and the waves, before even reaching the shore. Another three DDs were launched by an LCT. This was largely due to the poor weather and rough waves, which overcame the canvas screens on the tank, causing them to sink. Another problem was the fact that the tanks had to swim for a distance longer than they were designed for. And if you want to know more about the tanks during the Omaha Beach landings, I cannot recommend enough World War II TV's excellent video on the subject where they interviewed Steven Zaloga, a historian very well versed in this topic. And while I'm at it, the Tank Museum has an excellent video on the technical details of the DD tank. Now where was I? Oh yeah, Omaha Beach. 
Despite many tanks sinking, it wasn't an automatic death sentence for the crews, as they had underwater breathing apparatuses and could escape through the many hatches on the tank. Still, 33 crew members unfortunately lost their lives before even reaching the beach. Due to the poor weather conditions, the 743rd Tank Battalion landed all their tanks directly on the shore from the LCTs, as the risk of German fire was less than the risk of poor weather conditions. The numbers I just described are only for the tanks that didn't make it to the shore, and don't account for the actual fighting that occurred on D-Day, where more German DDs were lost to German guns and beach obstacles. Once the DD landed, it effectively operated as a normal tank, until the screen was lifted again or detached. Sherman DDs would again be used during Operation Dragoon in southern France, as well as in northwestern Europe, Italy, and some even managed to cross the Rhine during Operation Plunder. Some tanks were even sent to India, to be used in a potential invasion of Malaya. The Sherman DD was an interesting product of his time, built for one purpose, to support infantry on the beaches of Normandy, and they technically fulfilled that purpose. However, there were still losses along the way, especially at Omaha. Given perfect circumstances, the tank could indeed succeed at its job. The problem is when those circumstances are not quite as ideal as we want them to be, and oftentimes in military conflict, they aren't. Still, I think their reputation as a completely failed piece of technology is a little bit of an exaggeration. Were they perfect? No, far from it. But did they get the job done? Ultimately, yes. D-Day was a success at the end of the day. So, in honor of the 80th anniversary of D-Day, I would like to thank the American, British, Canadian, French, Belgian, Polish, Dutch, Australian, New Zealand, Greek, Norwegian, Czech, and South African troops who fought that day to defeat tyranny. Wow, they do not call it World War II for nothing. Thanks for watching. I know it's been a hot minute since I last made a video, if you could even call it that. That minute is not just hot, it is literally the temperature of the sun. I could make a bunch of excuses about why that's the case, and while that sounds super tempting right now, instead, I'm gonna put more effort into this channel and try to improve the production quality of the videos. If everything goes right, I'll be seeing you again in a week. But if it doesn't go right, uh... Well... Maybe a year? <laughs> nah, I'm just joking. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like, it helps me quite a bit, and have a great day.